All right, let's start with the big story that we are tracking at this hour, where for the first time since defeating the so-called Islamic State, Iraq is holding its parliamentary elections today. Now, the new prime minister has a daunting task of rebuilding the country and also dealing with resentful Kurds and Sunnis. Now, the former Iraqi prime minister, Nur al-Maliki, cast his vote in the country's parliamentary election. Maliki is amongst one of the main contenders for the premiership facing current Prime Minister Hadr al-Abadi and also Shiite militia leader Hadi al-Amiri. Nearly about 30% of more than 7,000 candidates in these elections are women. Now remember, these elections are also being held for the first time since the Kurds held a controversial referendum to break free from Iraq last year. Now the sectarian rift amongst Iraq's three main groups, the Shias, the Sunnis and the Kurds, is still apparent even 15 years after the end of Saddam Hussein's rule. Now the call for a separate Kurdistan has always dominated the public discourse in Iraq. But last year, Kurds made up their mind and got down to business. The country's semi-autonomous Kurdish regional government spearheaded a referendum on the 25th of September. Now the Iraqi government rejected it as unconstitutional. Now what happened later? was on expected lines. Now, the Kurds unanimously voted for freedom, but the Iraqi forces had other plans. Now, they launched a military operation to retake control of the territories that were under the Kurdish regional government's control since 2014. Now, a month later, the Iraqi forces captured Kirkuk, an independent Kurdish state with the biggest oil reserves. All right, now, for more on this, we are joined in by Daniele Pagani, who's joining us from Amman. Good morning to you, Daniel. This, of course, is a key election in Iraq. Yes, this is a very important election, as you correctly pointed out. Uh, this is the first election after the defeat uh, of the terror group Islamic State, uh, which gave a very, very tough uh, time uh, to Iraq. It, it is also largely believed uh, to be an election uh, revolving around uh, the Prime Minister, Haider al-Abadi, Mm -hmm. uh, he is uh, the person who has the highest stake in this election. Uh, if he will succeed in winning this election uh, with uh, a good vote bank, it means uh, that Iraq is uh, put trust in his pledge to stop um, doing uh, politics uh, around the sectarian divide. And he is trying to give more space also to the Sunni minority, be it the Kurdish Sunni minority, but also the Arab Sunni minority. He is obviously a Shia Muslim. Remember that Shia Muslim makes out of the majority mm -hmm. of Iraq. And uh, also the most prominent parties running for election Compre um, comprehensive of the one run by uh, the very influential character, Mustafa al Sadr, are all Shia. So uh, it's an election which is very important. It's a democratic election uh, for the first time an electronic voting system will be used in Iraq. Uh, and it is an election largely believed to be around uh, the figure of the current Prime Minister, Haider al -Bani. Results we will be out in 48 hours, so the polls are closing at 6 p.m. today, so we expect by Monday, end of the day, to know what will happen to Iraq. Absolutely indeed. And also considering, you know, the very difficult circumstances through which Iraq is presently going through, uh, although the ISIS has been defeated, the issues of sectarian divide between the Shias and the Sunnis and taking their interests along in the government, and also the issue of Kurdish separatism, how much do you think these are going to play a role in the manner in which people will cast their vote today? A very big role. They're playing a prominent role. Uh, these are uh, very, very big and deep uh, and challenging uh, problems. Uh, the problem of the Kurdish independence and what to do after the referendum will be very high on the agenda. There is the necessity, one way or the other, to find a way out, a political way out, to the standstill between Baghdad and Erbil, the capital city of the Kurdish uh, region. Uh, Iraq cannot risk uh, to be divided, and the Prime Minister Haider al abadi has been saying he won't accept any true independence. Uh, the Syrian divide do play a very difficult role. This is why I say that the election uh, mm -hmm. highly is uh, on the figure of uh, Minister Haider al abadi who is a person who pledged many times uh, to stop to limit the influence of this sectarian division in the national politics. 
should he succeed in winning the election would mean also that the Iraqi people gave him the mandate to try to solve these uh, sectarian problems. There is also another problem which will be very challenging uh, for whoever will become the new prime minister of Iraq, which is the reconstruction. Iraq needs to get mm -hmm. back on track economically, politically, socially. Uh, large portions of the country are still uh, rubbled and destroyed, so there is the need of uh, uh, putting back on track the market of oil, starting selling oil, pumping up money in the public economy, paying salaries of the uh, civil servants. Otherwise, if this is not being done in a very quick span of time, in a very short span of time, uh, then all the sectarian problems that could bank on these economic difficulties to come back, to resurface, uh, and perhaps to create more security problems for the people of Iraq. Absolutely indeed. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Daniel Ibagani, for joining us and putting all of this in perspective. A very crucial election which is underway in Iraq, which will determine as to which direction Iraq actually embarks upon after this.